Welcome to the last tutorial we're going to be doing on the muscles of your anterior upper thigh. So we've got everything from our last couple of videos on the screen here and in this video we've just got uh, two or three left and then we're going to focus more closely on all the movements that we've talked about so far just so we really know what's going on. Now the first muscle we're going to talk about in this video is the iliopsoas and I shouldn't say muscle because the iliopsoas is actually a group of two muscles and it has a common insertion, so a common tenderness insertion on the femur which we won't talk about too much in this video but that's the superficial portion of the iliopsoas you can see that I just highlighted there. Now the first muscle in our iliopsoas group is going to be our psoas major the psoas major is actually a uh, quite long muscle and uh, thin as well and it's a muscle that's going to have its uh, origin at our spine. So it's going to have its origin at the spine and I'll draw that up here in a moment just as well. So origin at the spine and for the uh, functional movements that we can achieve with this muscle we've got thigh flexion so lifting your knee upward and we also have spine lateral flexion. Now you wouldn't usually see this in a, a muscle of the leg but we can achieve it because of the length and the insertion points of this muscle. So I'm just drawing, uh, we're going to go all the way uh, up past where I have this picture here and its origin will be on the vertebrae of the spine uh, behind our abdomino pelvic cavity so right up there. And the second muscle we have in this group is the iliacus. Now the iliacus is more of a fan shaped muscle and it's only really going to be responsible for thigh flexion. So once again that lifting of the knee upward. And this muscle's origin is going to be uh, within your iliac fossa. So I'm just outlining it here on a pelvis that I've just lightly put in so you can get a better picture of it. So it's going to attach all within this iliac fossa here. So it's a fan-shaped muscle, mainly responsible for thigh flexion. And the last muscle we're going to look at on the anterior aspect of our leg is our sartorius. A sartorius, this long muscle that I just highlighted. It's a fairly strap-like in our shape. And I'll just point out as well that it's actually the longest muscle in your body. So longest muscle in the body and it's actually going to go all the way from the iliac spine of your pelvis right down to the medial border of your tibia which is the large bone of your lower leg. So very very long. And for our movements that we can achieve with our sartorius we have lateral knee rotation so rolling our knee outward uh, laterally and abduction which is lifting our leg, lifting our whole leg laterally as well. Now you may have noticed these last few tutorials I have not pointed out exactly what these movements that I'm talking about are too often. That's mainly because I want you to remember those words and think about them before I tell you uh, outright. But now that we're at the end let's focus quickly on all of the movements that we've spoken about so far and I'll just show you them on this sketch down here of our little volunteer demonstrator and I'll just move it over a little bit so we have a bit more room and darken our muscles so I can write over the top of them. Okay so the first movement we're going to look at is thigh flexion. Thigh flexion is when you are lifting your knee upward so what you would be doing as if you were doing a tuck jump so I just drew that down there and we're going to see that movement on our sartorius, our iliacus and psoas major, also our pectineus and our two large adductors and one of our quadricep muscles as well. Now the next type of movement we've spoken about a few times is adduction. Now adduction is, I'll just draw here, if we have an angle outward from the body laterally Adduction is when we're moving a limb 
toward the midline. So we're adding it onto the body. And we'll see that with our pectineus and gracilis, and also our adductor muscles, all of our adductor muscles. So adduction is mainly going to be achieved by muscles on the medial aspect of our leg. Now abduction is just the opposite of adduction. So if we have that angle again, we're moving a limb away from the midline of our body. And we have the sartorius and the tensor fascia latte that will be the main muscles that achieve abduction. And before we go any further, I'll just quickly point out that I put thigh flexion on the wrong quadricep, so I'll just replace it right here on the right one, which is our rectus femoris. And now we can move on to our next movement type, which is medial rotation. And medial rotation, as I'm just showing there, is when we're rotating our knee or rotating our leg toward the midline of our body. And once again, that's going to be all of the medial muscles of our leg. So we had our pectineus and gracilis and also all of our adductors. And if we have medial rotation, we're also going to have lateral rotation. So lateral rotation, just like abduction being the opposite of adduction, we're rotating our knee outwards or rotating our leg outwards laterally. Now one of our last movement types or, or our last movement type exclusively to our upper leg, we could say, is knee extension. Knee extension simply being when your leg is bent, straightening it out to as if you were standing upright. So when you are standing upright, your knee is fully extended and the knee extenders are the ones that help you to do that. And they're mainly going to be your quadricep muscles. So the muscles you'd be using in a squat. We have the vastus medialis, lateralis, intermedius, and our rectus femoris. And the last movement I'll talk about, only because I mentioned it earlier in this video, is spine lateral flexion. So with spine lateral flexion, we're going to be, uh, if we put this angle here, from the midline of our body, leaning downwards and closing this angle. So that was a movement that was going to be allowed by our psoas major. So now that we've covered all of the uh, movements and naming of the muscles of your anterior thigh, we can see that several of them have many different uses and they all act in different ways and are different shapes. So it's important to know what you're looking at, how to name them and what they do within your body. As always, I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.